everybody. Uh, good morning. Uh, Hugo's out there. Aloha, says Hugo, and I say aloha right back to you. Rory is not with us today. Uh, he is, uh, I forget what he's doing today, but he'll be back with us tomorrow uh, and uh, Thursday as well. Um, so we're on our own. Uh, I had uh, some time over the weekend to put into this, so I uh, actually uh, did a fair amount of work uh, on uh, advancing and moving forward on this. I did not work on the uh, user controls very much because uh, I wanted to just kind of stay focused with what, what we're going to do here. Um, but I will, um, I'll, I'll show you what I've done here and we can kind of take a look at that. Uh, let's jump over to, let's maybe do, yeah, I guess we can do this. So, uh, over here, this is my latest check-in, uh, over here. Um, I'm not liking how this is kind of lining up here. Let's do something more like this. Uh, let's take a look at what we got here. Um, I worked on a couple things. One of the things I did is, uh, with character I added, uh, so this is for our Dungeons and Dragons game. So, uh, or at least our Dungeons and Dragons um, Dungeon Master Helper app that we're building. And so we have to be able to represent characters. And one of the things that a character in Dungeons and Dragons could have is uh, any number of conditions. Uh, for example, you can be blinded, charmed, that sort of thing. So um, I uh, set this up so that uh, uh, we could have those conditions. So I added the enum conditions. I added exhaustions levels as well, which happens when you're fatigued. And, uh, and I integrated those into character. I also added uh, on-turn and off-turn actions uh, and uh, equipment. And uh, as well as curses and blessings. So I've got the ability to kind of have things that stick with you, uh, that impact you and impact your numbers. Uh, that can go away at a particular time, uh, as well as uh, equipment that you can hold on to. Um, and so I have those kinds of things. With regards to equipment, I think I put that all over an item, which is, there it is right there. So item is a new thing I added, um, and uh, it, it, wait, hold on. Why does this seem so small? Weapon properties, damage type. Oh, I see. There's some that's being uh, uh, hidden here. Let's just jump over and look at item here in the source code. It'll be easier to see it. It'll be a little nicer view here. And almost there. There's item right in here. And so, um, and so there's a number of classes in here. Uh, I've got a class called mod, for example that can modify uh, a property, for example. And uh, it, for example, I might have a, a, a ring of uh, fire protection, something along those lines. And, uh, and so it will only work if it's equipped, meaning the ring is on one of the fingers. So, so this just says, is the mod required? Does it require being equipped or does it require to be consumed? For example, I might have a, a potion that has a mod attached to it that requires consumption. So it's not enough to simply own and hold on to the potion. So I created the mod class over here. I'm not doing anything with it yet, I think, but I'm kind of there. I'm getting close. Cursor blessing I added as well. Uh, and uh, it's got the name and description and an array of mods and a number of turns that that cursor blessing will last for. Uh, so we can do that. I've got a time measure. It can be an either, uh, it's an item that can be either in actions or seconds. And, uh, and then I have a time span class I added with some static methods for creating uh, a, a, a span, particular span. And I can do it from actions where I can give it an action count or I can give it from seconds uh, uh, or minutes or hours, that sort of thing. Those I haven't really used yet, but I'm going to need to use them because keeping track of time is also important and I want the, the computer to do it automatically, the, the app to do it automatically. I don't want the dungeon master to have to know how much time has passed and is a cursor blessing still active or not, that sort of thing. So I want it all to be automated because I want the dungeon master part of it to be as easy as possible because we're doing it live. This is all for a live show. Um, then I've got item down here, including things like equip time, unequip time, so like for armor. For some things it's instant, but for other things like armor, it might take a while to put on and another amount of time to take off. 
and uh, it's got a possibility to have any number of mods, also any number of attacks. I didn't go over attack yet, but attack's got a description, a range, and then a damage type and a damage roll. So you can kind of see all of the, the uh, mathematical, statistical, dice-related, uh, mod-related aspects of Dungeons & Dragons are being represented uh, here in TypeScript in these classes. Uh, so we'll be able to um, we'll be able to, to <laughs> modify those, and so uh, ideally the dungeon master will be able to grab a you know if I say I want to attack with my short sword, the uh, dungeon master will be able to take my short sword and drag it over onto the monster, and that'll then give me dice that I can roll as a player, virtual 3D dice, uh, and roll those dice and uh, attack the creature. So um, so one of the things that's cool we're doing a couple of cool things here. One of the things that's cool is uh, we're adhering to principles of good design. So uh, uh, one of those principles is fewest steps uh, to accomplish the, the task. And so we're creating an app that allows the dungeon master to do uh, in, in the least amount of thought and the least amount of physical motion to accomplish the tax, task of managing the game. Um, and uh, we'll also see uh, these, the, some of those uh, design principles come into play in some of the user interface that we're creating. In fact, I think what we left off, let's see if this works. I think I, when I was testing this over the weekend, it was not working, but I wasn't entirely sure why or why not. Let's see what happens. There we go, it's working, so we're good. So this is the product, this is kind of the Dungeon Master app. This is built in WPF right here in the back that we're working with. And I can pl click on a player, and when I change the player, the scroll slams down, opens up, and reveals the stats for that player. <laughs> now these stats here are all, all consist of test values. Um, the rolls, the strength, the dexterity, all of that are just randomly rolled uh, numbers that are coming out. And uh, each time I refresh uh, the page, we get, um, uh, each time I refresh the, the overlay, it'll create a new set of character roles for me. Oh wow, take a look at that. That's uh, all tens all the way there uh, with, with regard, almost all tens. That's a, a very unusual uh, role. I can also click on the pages like this to change the page for a particular character. So if I'm still on character uh, mark here, right here, I can just click on any of these pages here, and uh, it'll unroll and then unravel and ravel it and ravel itself up and then unroll with showing the new pages. And I've also added the ability, a crude ability to emphasize. So uh, if I come in here and I say test emphasis one in the chat room, it will emphasize the strength uh, property right there. And I say crude. Um, it's crude because it immediately changes, it, it immediately dims the background down. It's like immediately like, boom, there's the change. Uh, in fact, if I'll show it to you again. Uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, I think, refresh this overlay to get that, to show that to you one more time. So with the overlay refreshed, we'll bring down a character, and then I'll, I'll get, uh, I'll do uh, test emphasis one, and just immediately there you can see it, it just, it just changes that. So it's crude because it changes it immediately. I want it to fade that in over time. And then when we're done emphasizing, I want to fade it out. I think we're not gonna have time to do that today. I think we're gonna, uh, I have a feeling we're gonna get just to the second thing that I wanna do today, which I'll tell you about in a second. Um, but that's the first crude, the, that, that's the first, as first aspect of it that's kind of crude. The second thing that is crude about it is that it's, if you just are looking at the screen, there's nothing that really draws your eyes in on this. And the whole purpose behind doing this is that we want to, uh, we want to call attention to um, these aspects of it here. Now, I just did another test over here. Um, oh, uh, Hugo Dahl says, when you're emphasizing, it might be interesting to scale it up a bit. Not by much, but maybe 1.2, 1.25x. Uh, absolutely viable possibility. We could totally do that. In fact, make it growing out a bit would be very cool, right? Just have it kind of uh, increase its size a little bit um, and do that in a natural way, uh, not a mechanical way. Um, totally, totally do it. And I love the idea. However, I've already built assets to, to do what I'm doing here. And the second piece that I want to do, instead of growing it, what I want to do is I want to have, uh, I want to use our emitter 
and our particle system to create little magical particles behind it, subtle, subtle motion to, to kind of call your eyes' attention up there, but so subtle that it's not going to interfere with you being able to read the numbers, which means we're going to have low contrast, likely low contrast, and slow motion, the slow motion. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hugo says, this is more long-term fit, finish, polish, fun bits. No, I totally, I, I totally agree. This is an equally viable solution. They both, both the animation that I'm thinking about with the particle system and uh, what you're suggesting, Hugo, are both uh, great, great suggestions. They're, bo they're both effective at what our goal is, which is to bring the eyes in. Um, so, uh, so, th so that's what we're going to do, I think, at the end of the show. The the, the, and I'll show you one more thing that I worked on that, uh, uh, that I haven't, uh, uh, that, I, uh, um, that I haven't talked about yet. And this is where we're going to kind of start the show. And then th that is that every single one of these pieces here, we cr we, I've added now that control that we were working on. The one that if I click it once, um, the control, if I click it once, the control is focused. <laughs> By the way, you can see a bug right up here with the highlighting there. We've changed pages, but we're still highlighting using the older uh, highlighting. Let me get rid of that and come back up over here like that. So I have the ability to click on these and activate them. I don't have a way to deactivate them yet. And really what I want is if I click on one, I want all the others to go away. I want it to behave like a radio button. So. Um, that's the first thing that we're going to add is the ability to turn these into radio buttons. The second thing we're going to add is we're going to make it so that when, um, when I click one of these, like sleight of hand here, it's going to highlight sleight of hand right there. That's what we're going to make ha have it, uh, have it hap uh, that's what we're going to make happen. Um, let me do one more thing here. I want to just show you test emphasis three on this page just to show you what I'm talking about. So there, for example, that highlights animal handling and in that manner, so that we want to do that. Okay? So that's the first step. So I need to treat these like uh, radio buttons right here is what I need to do. And I have not really thought about this much in terms of how I'm going to do this. These are all controls that are on, that are dropped on. Here, let me move this out of the way. Let me uh, refresh this over here. These are all dropped onto our DHDM application right here. I've got a character sheet custom control, which is this. It's not going to show because we're running. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down this. And I've still got Mr. AnnouncerBot. Let's just double check that Mr. AnnouncerBot is still connected to the chat room. And it looks like Mr. AnnouncerBot is not. So let's close that down. Let's start up Mr. Announcer Bot all by himself. Let's make sure, hold on one second here. Debug, stop debugging. <coughs> and, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that here. Okay, Mr. Announcer Bot is now running. And to do that test, I'm going to type in Mark. Hello. There we go. All right, so Mr. Announcebot is connected to the chat room. Um, let me show you real quick. Let's here. make this code dance. There you go. Will Bennett has entered the uh, chat room. Welcome, Will. Glad to see you here. Um, I was going to go. Here we go. Let's do this. I'll pop this into the chat room. Here is the... Uh, link uh, to uh, this page right here, episode 76 begin. That's the source code for today. Uh, Mr. AnnouncerBot, if you go here and look at this, you can see some of the things that you can say in there depending on the level that you're at. <coughs> so, um, so that's kind of some of the things that are out there. Uh, I think I, by the way, I restored our settings, by the way, Will. I think that you might be in uh, you might be in good shape again and be able to say the things that you wanted to say before. I think even that code dance one is one of your tests, so that might have been uh, that might have been it. So here is the uh, the character sheets user control. So there's one of these for each player, and each well, on this I've got dropped down these stat boxes. This is the this is the piece that we built last uh, episode, 
And I've also got these check boxes on here too so in some cases, like right here, just over it so that I can draw over it here and we can check and click it, um, that sort of thing to interact with it. I'm just using a standard checkbox here. I am setting is enabled to false. Uh, we may have time to uh, make changes here or maybe not, I'm not sure. Um, and so I put all of these out here. They're all out here, every single one of these. Uh, I can, uh, I can, if they're calculated, I'm using a text box, a text block rather. And if it is a, uh, something the, the, the DM can change, the game master can change, I'm making it a stat box so they can click it. Now, I want to, I want to do two things. I want to be able to support if you click one without holding the shift key down, any others that are selected get erased. Okay, so we need to essentially erase all of the previously highlighted elements. Uh, we also need to erase all the previously highlighted elements when we change pages. I just want to, that's just the way I want to do it. If I'm highlighting one and I switch to a new player, I don't want to be highlighting that same thing. I want to clear all that highlighting. So we need something to clear all the highlighting. If I've got the shift key down though, and I'm clicking a new entry, then I want to add to it. I don't need to erase the previous ones. So my thoughts on this are, okay, I am going to, I think I need a registration mechanism. So if I'm a stat box and I'm instantiated, I'm created, I need to go tell somebody, hey, I'm, I'm out here. Tell a, a, a list in a static class, for example. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then that should solve the problem. That way, if I need to clear, I'll go clear and it'll go through all the, the other ones out there, reset their, stat, their states. I think this actually might be pretty quick to build all this. So um, let's do that. I think I'm gonna just create a new class here. Actually, what we can do is let's go to stat box, go in here to the code, and I'm just gonna use Code Rush to create a new class inside of here. And I might take this and move this out to its own file here. Move type to file. So I'm just hitting the, the Code Rush key here or control dot, whatever you wanna hit here, choosing move type to file. And Code Rush is gonna pop it out here, create a, a uh, pops it out to its new its own file with the right file name matching the name of the enum and uh, adds it to the project automatically. So, um, so we're good there. We can uh, hit escape to get back. And, uh, and now let's go and create a new class in here. So I'm gonna say uh, class, I think I can come in with an uppercase C to get it static. There we go. And uh, this is going to be, uh, I think Statbox helper maybe? Or should I put it, wait. I am now thinking I am going to put it as a static uh, piece in here, inside the class itself is what I think I'm going to do. So I want to create a, uh, a, a new list of uh, the uh, stat boxes right there. And, um, and that's going to be uh, our known, our active, active stat boxes. By the way, if you're curious as to how I got that line of code so fast, I used, uh, normally I would do nl dot and then uh, I had it on the clipboard so I can just use the slash right there to get a new list of stat boxes, but I want it to be static, so I started with an uppercase letter right there. So new list of that is what I did right there to get me that new list of stat boxes. Again, I could use this to represent what's on the clipboard. Um, so, uh, so there's my active stat boxes right there, and that's static. So that's kind of cool. And I'm thinking, is it enough, is it sufficient to simply come in here and say active stat boxes dot add this? It might be sufficient to do that. Wait, only for active though. Known or active, yeah, only active. So it's not here that I wanna do it, it's when I become active that I wanna do it. And when I'm inactive, I wanna remove it, is what I wanna do. Okay, so let's look at that. So let's say um, uh, we are going to go to focus. So focus is when we click it once and we have that light goldenrod yellow background right there. Um, at this point, the question is, uh, what do we would do and want to do with everything else? I think we want to say, um, let's see here. Uh, active stat boxes add this. And I think we want to also say uh, if uh, shift key down, SKD, like that, 
if maybe not that, or if it's if that and that is not equal to shift, so then we want to clear active stat boxes is what we want to do. So we'll say uh, clear active stat boxes like that. And uh, let's go declare that. And this is going to be static, like that. And uh, I think we want a, a big fat for each in here. And then we're going to say uh, stat box dot uh, stat box state, I think we called it, equals stat box state dot display only. And that should clear them. Now we're still not communicating, we're not, still not sending out any information out across signal R yet to update our overlay, but let's get this working here and then we'll take that as the next step, I think. So uh, is that really as simple as it gets? Is it, is it that gonna be that easy is the question I'm wondering. So if the shift key's not down, we're gonna clear anything active. Otherwise, if the shift key is down, we're gonna just keep adding to it. And, uh, and I think right here we wanna say uh, update, you know, to, we need a to-do here uh, update uh, via signal R. Update the overlay via signal R, like that. Okay, so let's give that a shot and see what we get. Uh, let me go uh, delete all the copies of Chrome I've got running. Let's go ahead and hit run. Actually, before we do that, let's shut down Mr. Announcer Bot. There we go. And run so we don't have two instances of Mr. Announcer Bot running. You know, it's funny, I didn't think about implementing this at all. And I was thinking, oh, it'll probably take the whole show. And now if it's just like three lines of code, I'll be like, oops, we're gonna get right. Okay, what's Hugo saying there? One thing I keep forgetting with flag enums, which I was reminded of today while we're back code. suggestion is we can hide the bitwise operations with the uh, enum var dot has flag. Oh yeah. That, so, so let's talk about this because this is, I'm, I'm I am recognizing this, but I'm not, I'm not um, recalling exactly where that's from. Is that C sharp? Is that uh, JavaScript? Enum var has flag, let's look at enum has flag. Enum dot flag. Let's see what we got there. What do we got? C sharp. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So that now means is this code becomes, well, that code doesn't become anything because we're running. Uh, let's bring the app up and see if it's working. So click there, click there, oh look at that. And now, see it should go everywhere now, hold the shift key down. It was that simple, kids. That's awesome. So these checkboxes aren't doing anything yet, they don't have any focus, but, uh, but that's what's going on there. Everything else is working pretty well. Um, now I wanna clear all when I do this. So I gotta, I've gotta do that piece, and I haven't done it. I'm still focusing, or do I want to do this? Because they are actually independent on each page. Or, or no, wait, because what will happen is when I get over here and I click on this, or actually that, then it won't be selected over here. Yeah, I want to clear them, definitely, when I'm changing, uh, when I'm changing players. So let's, uh, we'll add that change, and I think when the same stop will, uh, in, in the same uh, coding sequence, we will work to, um, Send the send it the data over via signal R, and we'll take a look at that. That actually I think is uh, it's going to take some time anyway to do. So, um, so we got to do that. That's one of the things we have to do. Let's uh, go look at uh, main app window selection changed. Tab control selection changed. I just hit the tab key there, tab to next reference, just gets me the next reference there, that's code rush. And uh, <coughs> player uh, page changed, and now what I wanna do is I wanna go back over to 
uh, stat box, and we're going to look at this function, and I want to make this public. I'm just using alt up and down arrows here to cycle through different visibilities here. So we're going to make that public, uh, clear active stat boxes, and uh, let's come back over here. And so we're going to say uh, stat boxes, stat box dot clear active stat boxes, like that. So that takes care of that piece. Signal R is the next thing that we need to do here. We have got, I think we need an event. That's what I think we need. And um, is it, where is the event going to be though? I almost think Oh, and then I want to say, hold on, this is not entirely done here. This is going to be active stat boxes dot clear. So we want to get rid of all of them right there. So this will go through, reset their states to display only, and then we're going to go to clear uh, in terms of that. And I think that works pretty well. Um, Okay, I am thinking that we don't actually need, I was gonna add a routed event to this, but I don't think we actually want or need a routed event. Um, I think I just need a, uh, uh, a regular event here that's gonna be, um, uh, that's just gonna be uh, active. Do I want it here or do I want it somewhere else? I think I want it somewhere else. What do I have here? Yeah, I think we created another class. Here we go. This is where I was starting right here. Let's do this again. So, so a new class, uh, uh, active, maybe focus helper is what I'll call this. My focus helper. That's what I think I'm calling it. And I'm going to grab uh, active, state, st active stat boxes, and I'm going to move this stuff over uh, up into here. Let's see where else we get this right down here. Um, okay, so this is going to be this is, that's going to become the focus helper. We're going to, work, we're going to get to that focus helper dot add. I think. And save this. And uh, this is going to be focushelper.clear. And uh, let's uh, clear that method. Fine, put it there. And then we're going to say this.add stat box. OK. And uh, let's see where else does it show up here, down here. Nowhere else. Excellent. So we're going to take that and put it up here. Come right over here. Move type to file. Nice. So we've got focus helper there. It's got the clear. It's got the add. And now I want the event inside of here is what I want to do. I want to put this event in here. And it's going to be uh, active uh, controls. So focused controls changed. That's what I think it's going to be. Focused controls changed. Like that. Okay. And um, let's create an event trigger for that. And uh, and then we'll. Uh, I think I'm just going to, I'm not going to, I'm, yeah, I don't know, I'm like 
not there. Um, and event org is empty. And, um, and then right here, we're going to say, yeah, I'm not even going to do sender either. I'm uh, going to just do that. We're going to just replace that with null. And, uh, and at this point, we're going to say something like this. If activeboxes.count is uh, greater than zero, then we're going to pop that there, and we're going to fire the event on folks' controls changed. Okay, now one of the things we have to be careful with, we have a static event in this class, <laughs> which means if anything lists the event and then goes away, uh, that event is going to uh, uh, still be connected to this, which means it will, uh, that class is not gonna go away, it won't be garbage collected because it's still got a connection to it. So if anything goes away, we need to come out to the static event and say we're not listening to you anymore. So we have to remember to do that. Um, and <coughs> so we've got this here, and then we're going to also put it here. <coughs> okay, so that feels pretty good to me. All right, so we've got our focus helper, and I think that's, that's in good shape. Now we've got uh, event triggering for that. Let's put a listener in here, and uh, I'm going to put the listener in uh, the main window. That's where I'm going to do that. So uh, here in the main window, uh, let's go look at the code. This is now in Focus Helper, isn't it? Yep. Okay. All right, and um, inside the main window, here where we are uh, initializing it, I want to come in here and I want to say uh, uh, focus helper dot focus control change plus equals, let's grab this over here, and here's where I think I want to do the signal R. Is that right? Don't I have that function in here? I do, focus item. And that's what I want to pass into it. So. <coughs> Um, but the, the, so I know at this point the player ID and the page ID because I'm managing those two things. I know those. But I don't know the, um, I don't know the uh, item ID. And this is what's going to, we're going to have to take a little bit of work to figure this out and to set all of this up uh, correctly here. Um, the player ID is the tab players.selected index. The page ID is whatever the last selected page is, which is, are we storing that? Right here, character sheets. Dot page looks like we have it already built in to the character sheet side page. Okay, so cool. So let's come in here. The page ID is this piece. Okay. Mm, why is it not like a character sheets? What's going on there? Oh, character senders character sheets. Let's store that. Okay, let's drill in here, see what, that's a scroll page. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to search through it, I think. Um, let's just do this. We're going to say uh, a new variable with that type, uh, call it uh, uh, active page. With that, set it equal to scroll page dot main as part of the default. Let's go take a look at it. When this happens, we're going to say, we're going to come down here. I'm just selecting this hitting the letter B to embed it in braces like that. We're going to come down and say, okay, active page is equal to character sheets.page. 
like that. So we're just going to store that, and then we'll uh, do this like that. Uh, maybe make those properties. Hold on a second. It looks like I missed a couple of things. Kent and Keller blocking the code. Sorry about that, Will. Um, uh, just notice that code rush add that pops up in the top corner is a typo unparalleled. What? What, what, what? Did I get that wrong? All right. Thanks for that. I'll take a look at that. Make a note to myself here on unparalleled after the show. Take a look at that. I thought I had that right. It still looks right to me, but we'll have to check that out. Um, oh, un unparalleled. Got it. That is an awesome typo. I see it now. Okay, uh, good job. Uh, okay, so active page is that. And then uh, up here, right here, when the selection changes, we want to go back and say active page is back to this again. So selection changes, that means the player has changed, and we're going to do this right here, okay? Um, let's rename this, call it player changed, so it's a little clearer. Now we've got the uh, active page, so we've got that piece, we've got our second parameter here. The last parameter is the item ID, and we really, uh, I want the stat boxes to hold that, which reminds me, there's one other piece I didn't tell you about. I also created this group background control, which is essentially a user control class called group background with nothing in it. It says the background is tra transparent, but the type is group background. And uh, it does have a couple properties. And I use it once on uh, our character sheet. Let's go open up that, take a look at that. I use it here, right there. I, I'm going to use it in more places, but the purpose behind a group background is to bind together related controls. So if I click anywhere in this group background without clicking on one of these two, both of these will be highlighted and selected. That's kind of the idea there, what that's going to happen. And it's got these, it's got these properties, stat box one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I can just do a binding to bind it to the stat box I want to bind it to. And then if the group is selected, then what it's going to do is it's going to go activate those pieces that I have said are part of the group. Um, it's not a parenting control. It's not anything along those lines. It's simply uh, just a uh, kind of a goes behind as a wrapper to get the mouse. I could make it a parenting control. In fact, now that I say that, I hear myself say that, I think, oh, maybe I should have done that. Uh, Might have been a little bit easier. Um, but I did not do that. Um, Will, I need a little more context on your question, maybe make those properties, because I unfortunately looked at that uh, after I think whatever code you're referring to was written. So if that still applies and you want me to do that, let me know. So item ID, we've got to solve that. We've got these stat boxes out here um, that are changing. Uh, let's also make sure that when the group box, what does it do in here? We set the state to focus. And if we go set the state to focus, that's going to be called, I think. And then we're going to say uh, on stat box state change, which gets me here, which gets me to focus helper dot add call. Just want to make sure we're going to get there, even if the uh, other piece does it. It looks like we will. Um, OK. We are not running. We can uh, make this modification right here, right? Isn't it has flag? Boom, that's Hugo's suggestion, right? Right there. So we're going to say if not has flag. And I would agree. I like that. It's uh, totally awesome. In fact, I'm going to set a reminder to myself to update the templates as well to uh, expand that way. Um, and when I say update the te templates, I've got the, uh, I got that very quickly by, by typing in uh, uh, SKD for shift key down, and it gives me this right here. And so we just got to, uh, we can modify the templates to see what the version of .NET is out there, and if it's uh, older, it'll still do that older code, and if it's newer, it'll do this newer, slicker code. So that'll also be something that is likely to come in a future version of CodeRush. Player ID and page ID. Oh, okay, cool. 
yeah, I think we can do that. Um, let's see what we've got here. Uh, not here. In um, this is the main window. Uh, right here. So we're talking about, so this is player ID. So let's do that. We're going to make a read-only property of type integer. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, uh, oops, I don't want a backing store for it. So I think I just put a comma there, and it gives me one without backing store there. So comma is a shorter version of the template. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to say, uh, call this player ID, like that. And that's going to return this. that and then uh, that's going to come in here player ID let's see if we got selected the index anywhere else in here just hitting the tab key it's right there and um, player page changed let's fix this too because page ID all over the place is really a scroll page here locally so let's change that here to a scroll page. Then this is just active page we're sending in, which makes me happier. That's active page that we're sending in. And then now page ID, we're just going to typecast that to an int. So CI space will give me that right there. C for cast, I for int. Um, OK, so that's pretty cool. Uh, looking and feeling better about that. Um, player ID is um, that is passed in active page wait 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 that something looked wrong about that oh a page ID is what I was I was wait I said there it is right there okay now we're good I think I was here looking here but thinking page ID but saying hearing myself say player ID so I was like what all right did get a lot of sleep last night just realized I should have probably clarified with that uh, disclaimer Right? Disclaimer! Mark doesn't know Jack! Player ID typo? Where is that? Yeah, well, I see you're trying to, to reach me. Let me do the, um, let me get, uh, load up. There we go. Mr. Announce bot's in the house and loaded, so now you're, uh, if you want to call attention, to get my attention, you'll do that. Uh, SNB's here. Hello, SNB. Just know that the coder said, yeah, oh, so it was SMB that told me that. Sorry, I was not looking at that. Um, player ID, because I have an extra, uh, an uppercase D at the end, is that why? Oh, up here. There's my typo. Right there. Player ID, gotcha. Okay, got it. Uh, and then finally, item ID. Item ID is going to correspond with, now let's go back over to TypeScript here and take a look at how we're going to do that focusing. Uh, if we go into the Dragon game and we look at uh, my call to add emphasis here, I'm calling off of emphasis main dot strength, for example. So I'm passing in th this, this enum element right here. If we jump into that, these are the different things on the main page that I can emphasize. So my thoughts are what I want to pass in. The IDs are these as strings. That's what I think think I want to do. Wait, let's just double check that. Is that coming in? Yeah, that was a, how I set it up. It was as a string. And then when we get over to TypeScript, I want to convert the string to the correct element. That's what I want to do. So as a test, name headshot, what I want to do is let's go over into Statbox. Let's create a new dependency property here that's going to be the focus ID is what I think I'm going to call this. So I'm going to just type in a DP here like this. Uh, I think we're going to, whoops, DP, and uh, this is going to be called the, uh, the focus item, I think, focus item property, and it's going to be a type of a string, and uh, its uh, uh, default value is going to be uh, string.empty, so s.e, and the space bar will get me string.empty like that. And, uh, and so there's my new focus item property that we've just added. Uh, and, uh, and so now we can specify that. So that means if we come up here and we rebuild, we can specify some focus items for some of these entries. 
<clears throat> oh wait, we're not going to build. Just realized. Yeah, that's where we're. That's where we are. So what we need to do next is we need to go through all of our. Um, we need to go. To, we need our focus helper to uh, essentially call out to uh, uh, focus item, or alternatively, we need the focus helper to say, "Okay, I'm going to make these uh, public right here," or "I'm going to." Uh, can I encapsulate as a property? Let's do that. Uh, select the properties to encapsulate. No, no, no. That's not what I want to do. I want to encapsulate field. Uh, and use the property, and you still use field locally here. That's what I want to do right there. So I want to create this, and I want a private setter, like that. Okay, so active stat boxes, I can get access to that. It's a list of those. So now I can come over here and do a for each on the uh, active stat boxes. Uh, that's active stat boxes in Focus Helper. Hold on one second here. Let's get Focus Helper dot Active stat boxes, cut that to the clipboard, FE, and uh, there we go. So for each stat box in the active stat boxes, um, I think at this point we can assume everything in that list is in an active state. Uh, so in, uh, let's assume that's the case. If that's the case, I'm going to come in here, stat box dot, and then we called it the focus item. that it? Focus item is a type string. Okay, why does it like active page? Um, it's a scroll page, focus item. It needs to change this to a scroll page too. As well as unfocus item, which we don't have unfocus item Nothing's happening with unfocus item yet. Let's typecast there. And let's typecast there. <laughs> so that might be something we want to think about in terms of, you know, how are we going to unfocus this? Uh, I don't have a good answer for this yet. Focus item, focus item. Yeah, I think I need an unfocus item in here. So, let's go back over here. In anticipation of supporting that, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to say uh, deactivated act, deactivated stat boxes. Create that, and I'm going to say uh, in this clear, we're going to now say uh, deactivated dot uh, add range. What do I get to pass in there? And then uh, pass in the uh, active stat boxes. I think that's going to work like that. <coughs> so focus controls changes changed. That means now let's do also uh, duplicate line there, and we're going to say uh, deactive deactivated stat boxes like that. So now we've got our deactivated stat boxes. And, um, and so now on our focus changed event, we can do this. And now we're going to call unfocus item on it. And then we're going to clear those out. I don't know, it's a little, I feel like we're outside touching too much stuff. Will Bennett says you could just create an event orgs and pass the ones that change state. Um, yeah. 
I could do that. I'm not sure I want to do that though, because I'm like, uh, I'm not not sure the, the the benefit's slightly better, I think, um, in terms of I'm not having to deal with all of this specific knowledge of what you know of the properties in Focus Helper, things like that. Um, let's take a look at that. So we call it here. Yeah. We call it here. Where else do we call it? Call it there. Okay, I'm on board. Let's do it. All right, so we're going to change this up again. We're going to change this up a bit. We're going to create a uh, uh, focus control change handler like that. And that's going to be a new delegate uh, like that. And it's going to take in uh, focus control change event args, which we're going to have to create. So Code Rush, can it help me here? Mm, it's given me a declare class, but it's not probably really what I want. I want an event args to send it here. Um, TA, is that going to give me event args descendant? Great. Uh, so we need uh, some properties in here. So let's pass in some parameters. We are going to pass in uh, essentially two lists of stat boxes here, the active and deactivated ones. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to have this, uh, call this the active, and, uh, and one more that's going to be uh, deactivated like that. So that's our deactivated stat box and the other ones are active stat, thing, stat boxes. Um, like that. Uh, you probably do just one list and you just check the state. I don't think I can do one list. Um, I don't think I can do one list on this. Um, list can't be found. Let's uh, bring in generics. Okay. Uh, all right, so now let's go in here and let's uh, use Code Rush to. Uh, I think I need to move to the right just a little bit here, and uh, let's do declare uh, property with initializer. So there's our active property right there. Uh, let's make it be uh, a private set, and uh, let's do the same thing here. Let's declare property with initializer. There, that's done. I also want to make that a private setter too, right here. Um, display only is in is display only to the display only or other display only is inactive others are active oh I see what you're saying by checking the state yeah yeah I could I'm but I'm already I've got momentum and I think be, the benefit of changing that direction is not um, substantial I kind of like having the two different lists so um, and it feeds into what I was doing before anyway I think so, um, so now we got to change this uh, up a bit, um, and uh, on focus control change. And so, what we're going to do here is we're going to pass in. Uh, we want to pass in a new focus control event args, focus control change event args. So it's going to be a new like that, and we're going to pass in our active stat boxes and our deactivated stat boxes like that. Maybe I should change these to uppercase, so we're referencing the properties um, like that. Uh, okay, so that's our new uh, evoke uh, on the event, and uh, let's go look at the handler for that. This handler is going to take in a uh, what do we call that uh, event arg? Where are you? Okay. That right there. Okay. So now we're coming in here and we're going to say for each stat box in E dot active. For each stat box in E dot inactive or not inactive what do we call them deactivated 
okay? So there's the deactivated ones, we're doing that. The other thing I want to do is over here in, uh, in the unchanged, we, 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 do, we send that out, we need to clear this after we call unchanged. So I think I'm just going to put it right here, like that. So we're going to invoke and then we're going to clear. And so now that clearing thing doesn't need to happen uh, out here anymore. So that's gone. Okay, I think it's a little better. And um, so, hold on, looks like I got these reversed. Yep, look at that. We'll set at the same time. Momentum, uh, display, oh, yeah, okay, I think I'm caught up right there. Um, <coughs> okay, so we're gonna deactivate everything that's uh, unfocused, or we're gonna unfocus everything that's been deactivated. Um, that now has a shot, oh, I think. Uh, I don't think you need the field for deactivated. Just do it in the method. Uh, let's go take a look at that. Oh, yes, you're right. I think you are right. Let's go look at that. Um, focus helper. So the question is, I think, is that holding its weight? And um, I'm, I think I'm keeping it, is kind of where I'm at right now. Um, that's what I think I'm gonna do. Um, I, I think I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep the, uh, keep that uh, deactivated stat boxes. I think the, the weight of it in terms of um, memory hit, uh, performance, all of that is all pretty much undetectable. And the weight of it from a standpoint of making the code easier, hard to read, I think it, I think it makes the uh, the code relatively easier to read, and so I'm uh, I'm kind of okay and on it. I'm okay with it for now. Um, let's just there was something else that I was re recalling that we maybe we're not doing here. I want to make sure this on focus controls change was being called in the right spots, uh, and so we've got it when we're clearing and when we're adding, and I guess that's it. Okay, so does that also mean? Hold on, let's do one other thing. There's a problem that we have. We need a remove call. The problem is in character stats, sh character sheets here. Well, actually it's not there. It's in, I think, stat box itself. So stat box can change its state. And uh, one of the way changes it can go to is it can go, for example, to display only. If it goes to straight display only and it was previously focused, then I think we have to remove it. I think we have to come in here and we have to say uh, if uh, <coughs> old value equals stat box state dot uh, focused, The problem with that deactivated list is that you're not clearing it. Putting it in the method removes the chances of mistakes like this. Okay, um, I'll take a second look at that. We'll take a look at that, Will. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that explanation. Okay, so if old value is focused or editing, I, well, I guess if it's focused or editing, it doesn't matter. I think if we're gonna go to display only, then I think what we need to do is we need to come in and say focus helper dot remove of this what I think we have to do. And let's implement that. Shit, that is not what I wanted to do. That's that Visual Studio thing where it suggests that at the top instead of declare method. That's what I really want it to be. Okay, 
Um, and now we're going to say uh, uh, this dot. Do I have a remove in here? I forget. Remove removes the first occurrence of what does it throw an exception or not? Can be null for reference types. Let's try that. And uh, so we're going to do that. And um, so here we're calling clear after the in invoke of the event, which is the right place to clear it. So I don't think there's necessarily a mistake here yet. Maybe there was one before that you're referencing. <coughs> yeah, I guess I'm not, I am not seeing the, the, where I'm failing to clear it. I think I'm clearing it in the right spot. I clear it when we, when, when we fire the event. Okay, Will says my mistake. All right, fair enough. So if Will is not pushing, then I'm gonna say we're good. Uh, and I think at this point, are we, we're, are we ready to run? We're not quite ready to run or test it. Um, or wait, no, I think we are. We're not, it's not gonna actually focus, but it's gonna send uh, logs out. So let's uh, close down our uh, Mr. Announcer bot because it was running independently. And uh, let's kill every instance of Chrome. And let's start. Okay. And so let's bring that up. Let's bring this up right here. Change the page. Good. And got the sound effects. And then uh, if I click, let's do one more thing. Let's bring up inspect, bring up the console. So player page change is coming in. Let's see if we get a focus when I click on this. Nice. Focus item, one, one, and it's empty though. Oh, because we didn't set anything for it yet. We need to do that. I'm not sure what just happened. It's like I got it to a break point all of a sudden. I'm not sure what that was about. And I don't see my WPF app running. Where is it? Did it really shut down? That's super interesting. What's happening with that? Why did that die? Um, not sure. All right, let's come back over here, clear that off, and uh, reset it. Um, let's add some uh, values in here. So we want to go to um, here, and we want to go to where was it? It was in, I think, characters, stat scroll.ts. I think at the top of here is where I put that. Enum, nope. I think I created um, Here it is, right here, emphasis main. So um, let's just grab these one at a time. So let's say copy that come over to character sheet. That's this one right here. Let's hit a four to bring up this. It's gonna be in the miscellaneous right here. It's the uh, focus item. So we'll just paste that in there, name headshot. So there's that. Let's just do these up here at the top and see if these can work. Uh, race class is going to be, race class that, so it's focus item, is race class, like that. Uh, this one's level. This one uh, should be uh, inspiration. That, this one should be experience points. Where was it? That one right there. Let's 
experience points, and then we'll do alignment right here, which is probably alignment like that. Okay, so now we've got focus items for all of those. Let's run one more time. And uh, kill all Chrome before it starts up. Did I get it in time? Looks like I did. Okay. And looks like it's loading. Waiting for that to finish. And it's finished. And now let's switch over here. There we go. It slams in. Uh, and let's click on Race Class. And oops, I wanted to come in here and do inspect. Bring up the console. Do we see race class? Nice. So now we see race class. The second one, we are, we are coming out with something. Here we go. Modified. Here we go. Modified. Which one's modified? The enumeration may not execute. How is it being modified from here? Oh, I know what's happening. Okay. We need to change this in a way that's kind of quiet is what we need to do. And not by, uh, or at least in a way where we are uh, not firing off the event. So let's kill everything for a second. Uh, let's do something list like this. We're going to say uh, VB for Boolean variable. We're going to say uh, clearing internally. Like that. And we're going to set that equal to true. And uh, try finally block. And let's uh, set that equal to uh, false. And let's do this. Right like that. So that will go through, change those states. Here, I think we're totally fine and okay. Then what we want to do, oops, we don't want this here. I want to promote this to a field. Uh, promote to, I just go promote to field. That's what I want. Okay, so there's clearing internally. And then I want to, Nope, I want to put that, I think. I think I want to do this. I want to put it inside of there. Hold on. Mm. I'm, I'm getting there. Clear. All right. So let's do that. Put a method. Um, set to true. DB and uh, and then what I want to do is not fire the event wait this is going to work 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 here's where i need to prevent actually i do need to prevent it here um I really just have it here and I moved it out because I was like, yeah, I think I need to I need to move it back is what I think I need to do. All right, let's go move it back. All right. One more time. All right, so clearing into internally, this is static. And clear all is in here now. 
And then now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to say, hey, we're clearing internally, then we're just out. We're not going to do anything like that. And I think that's fair. And I think that's going to fix that, uh, that problem, which, uh, th that exception, which was causing us to get out of there. Did I miss anything? Oh, that's what I missed right there, clear all. Okay, all right, let's try that. Uh, let's try running again. Let's kill every instance of Chrome. Hit run. All right, inspect, come over here, click on Karen, hit console, very changed, let's go to race class, good, level, come on, clear all, collection was modified, maybe I'm totally, I thought I was, I thought I had this, I thought I got this, um, We're changing the state to display only. If we're, how am I calling it? Let's see. Yeah, I am. Uh, so let's take a look at this one more time. We are going in here. We are clear all is setting the display state to display only. Display only comes in, calls focus helper, remove this. That action is what I think is making the change right there to the list. Um, so with remove, I think we can also come in here and say, hey, if we're changing internally, I think we can kind of fix it here. Can I do edit? Do I have edit and continue here at all? Let's try back, if we can back it up. Set next statement. Let's run, let's try one more time. Here we go. So I think it's looking something like this. If clearing internally, then re return, get out of here. Is that gonna be it? There we go, I think that fixes it. Let's see if that works. There we go, that looks like it fixes it. Shift click, allows me to get several of these. Let's look at the, um, let's look at the console window and we can see what's coming out here. If I shift click on alignment, I'm expecting to see, let's clear this a second. I'm expecting to see several of these come across. There you go. Shift click on alignment says, okay, focus item level, inspiration, experience points on alignment. Um, well then it says, I think all you need to do is a reverse for loop. I am not entirely convinced of that. I think that we're still, I think the problem is this remove is, is gonna be called when we set change its status. This is the key, this is the solution. I feel pretty strongly that's the one that's gonna work. That's the one we want right there. Um, so the next step is to, okay, inside the TypeScript is to actually do something with this. Get that word level, that string inspiration, turn it into the right one and actually focus it. So that's what we wanna do next. So let's go into, sort of dive down into TypeScript here um, we want to look for a uh, focus item. A uh, for each use is an enumerator which causes the problem, the loop doesn't. Uh, oh, I think I see what you're saying. Because I'm just doing a for loop, I can remove items from it. Um, yeah, you know, I'm usually a big fan of this, but for some reason I think I was, uh, my clarity was not fully functional when I 
spoke a few min a minute ago. Um, so yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, I'm going to revise what I said. Well, I think you're probably right, uh, but I'm going to keep it because uh, and move forward because uh, I'm I'm com pretty confident that what we've got is working. Uh, we can maybe readdress that later if we have time. So um, okay, with that, let's go to uh, some TypeScript. And uh, where are we? In the Dragon game? I think we're somewhere out in here. Focus. Or no, wait, is it, um, it starts in connection.ts with focus item and unfocus item, and then that goes into the character stat scrolls focus item. Okay, and that's where the console log is. So now what we want to do is we want to get that we want to get that um, we really need the page ID and the item ID, and I think that's all we need. We don't actually need the player ID. So we need to work with the item ID and the page ID. Those big heads are in the way again, thanks. Well, and speaking of which, let's start up uh, Mr. Announcer Bot. There you go, it's in the house. Since we are, oh, we are actually running right now. Well, I guess I've started them up twice. Is that what I've really done? I've done that. Interesting. Wonder what's going to happen now. Let's see if we say awesome. Yeah. We get only one, so I'm okay with that. All right. Um, all right. So we need to get the. Um, we basically need to call add emphasis is what we need to do. Um, I'm going to assume that the page is actually equal to this dot page, that it's uh, the, the same one. But I, I, this is the check I need to do. I need something along these lines right here. I need, let me do this and change this to avoid as well. So if uh, the page ID is equal to scroll dot main, and we're on the main page, then we want to add to the emphasis to this piece. The emphasis index is going to be based on, we need to figure out the emphasis index based on the, um, let's go to character enums, based on emphasis main. So I think it's going to look like this. Uh, emphasis index is equal to emphasis main. Uh, I think like this of the item ID. I'm pretty sure that's going to work. Nah, I'm just pretty sure, not 100% sure, but I think that this is going to work. My understanding of JavaScript and TypeScript is if I put, you know, for any particular element, I think including an enum, if I put it in brackets, I'll be able to get the element from that. Uh, I'll be able to get the element, and in this case, the element has a numeric equivalent, uh, which is going to come back with that integer, right? So if I say emphasis main of uh, name headshot, in fact, can I, can I do that here in the console? Can I come in here and say, uh, emphasis main, look at that, of, let's put a uh, level in there. Perfect. Yes. So perfect. That's going to work. Nice. Uh, okay. So that, I'm going to use emphasis main. Now, if I'm on page two, I'm going to use emphasis skills, which are going to be these. And I don't think I have a third one built yet for the third page, but that's okay. So we'll, we'll add that later. So, so we need emphasis skills for the next piece down here. Uh, Will says I'm a TypeScript master sensei. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I've definitely learned a lot since we started doing this show, right? Okay, so this is gonna go here. That's gonna go there. Um, let's see how we're doing here. So there's another, the emphasis index is that. Um, and this is going to become skills, this one right here. And I think that's it. 
So that is how we add. Unfocus, I'll need to give some thought to to build. I don't think, I think that's not gonna be as easy, but let's try refresh here and see if that works. So we'll bring this over, bring up the console, uh, get our controller app here, and let's click on, uh, let's click on uh, switch over here. I think you have a typo. Yeah. What do I got? Shouldn't 410? Yes, it is. I think it's going to work no matter what because these are both, there's no way to really change from, uh, the pages should always be in sync, uh, but, but uh, let's refresh it anyway. Okay, there's a console. Here comes the app. The load is finished. Switch pages. Uh, and uh, there we go. Click on it. Look at that. Click. So I'm still not clearing them out, but I am totally able to do what I wanted to do. Right? So, um, so that's really nice. Um, the next level that I want to do is I want to be able to put, you know, a glow behind it. And we need to be able to clear these out too. So the clearing out is going to be, um, uh, we got to write that code, I think. Let's write that code now. And uh, so they clear them out. All right, so there's my focus item. And what we have to do next over here is we need to, in our unfocus item, I think since that's working, we can comment that console log out. An unfocus item, we need to now do a, we need to remove by index. Because of the nature of this, we're only gonna have one of that index in it. It's a very special use for the sprites, but that's what we're gonna need to solve this problem, I think. So uh, let's go build that and implement it. So remove by index. And um, in this case, it's the frame index, actually. I'm going to need to rename this, I think, is what I'm going to need to do. So let's do uh, this, remove by frame index. And this would be frame index, like that. Put a marker right there. I'm going to grab that. Yo, 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 mark! What you got? Big heads. Wait, I'm not seeing them now. Oh, I think you got rid of them when you, when you brought up the other piece right there. Thanks so much for that, though. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to go from the end to the beginning. Uh, check to see if... Uh, we're going to say if sprite dot frame index equals frame index, then we're going to be like, all right, we're freaking out of here. We're going to splice it like that. We're going to remove it. That may be as simple as that. I don't think I need three for comparing numbers. Do I? Is there anybody? Uh, will you have any insight on do I need three if I'm just comparing two numbers together? Um, that's my question. All right. So with that, I think that's it. Let's try and uh, refresh. Try to remember to clear out those uh, those big heads. Let's bring this up here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's click this and now click this. There we go. Look at that. It's working like we want it to work. Uh, safer because you can actually pass a non-number during refactoring. Okay. All right. So that's pretty cool, right? It's grabbing the piece that we want to grab uh, and highlighting it. Now, no, obviously, the data is not shared. If you look at these side by side, uh, I have, you know, 100 XP here, and I have the randomly generated character here. So we still have to throw, send character data across. So we're not doing that yet. Um, we will add that uh, in one of the upcoming episodes, probably later this week or next week. We will be 
be sending the actual character across, uh, yeah, which will be pretty interesting because I'll have the character class declared both in C Sharp and essentially in uh, TypeScript as well because they functionally need to exist in these two different worlds. Um, but I do like this, right? This part is nice. Now we just gotta make this over here look really, really good. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the, uh, the emitter part of this for tomorrow. And, uh, cause I think that's probably gonna take uh, easily another 30, 40 minutes, which I don't have today. And uh, so we'll do that. And tomorrow what we'll do is when we click on these, we'll have an emitter, a custom emitter built uh, essentially rectangular uh, for most of these. Sometimes in, in like this case down here, we'll make it circular probably, but it'll show up behind the highlighted piece that's coming up over here and just shoot out particles in a really subtle way. And the other piece I want to add too is when we, go do, when we go to this, when we switch this and we say, okay, let's go ahead and show this, I want it to fade in instead of just instantly clicking and turning on. I want it to go like very softly to, to, to get to this state. And so we're gonna work on those two visual elements of that tomorrow. Um, I think that's it. So uh, with that, uh, I think it's important to ask the question. Getting closer. We are getting closer. Um, yes, we're getting closer, Will. I know you want us to keep going, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it for today. Uh, we're gonna, so the question we were gonna ask is, you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? It is time to give away... It's a brand new car! It's not a brand new car. We're giving away a copy... Code Rush! Code Rush. Giveaway! What's the 1327? What's that for? Well, I need an interpreter for that bit of information right there. It's a Code Rush giveaway. And that's the time? Oh, okay. You'd think I would have, as a, as a cryptographer, you'd think, as an amateur hobbyist cryptographer, you'd think I would have looked at the time. Uh, yeah, it's 1327. I got to get out of here. Uh, and so today's winner is... Jetro Prime. All right, Jetro Prime, congratulations. I will be contacting you with uh, download instructions. Probably you can get your copy of... Uh, of Code Rush, uh, good job, excellent work on there. Um, thanks uh, to SMB, to Hugo Dahl, uh, Will Bennett, uh, appreciate uh, all the contributions and assistance tomorrow. Rory will be back with us. Um, thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.